So, so what is it? I mean, everybody is in there. So what is it with Diddy that so many, T.I. called him out. 50 Cent said one time on uh, 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 Charlemagne God's podcast, you know, Breakfast, Breakfast he says, Club. he says one time Diddy said, hey, let me go buy you some clothes. Let me take you shopping. He's like, well, you want to take me shopping? What are you talking about? So T.I. called him out. 50 called him out. But some people are afraid. What do you, what, what do you know about? Because some people are talking about there's Diddy involvement with Jamie and something happened because he was calling him out for some of the parties he was putting up. Is there anything you uh, have opinions on Diddy? Have you had any experiences with Diddy? This rapper and him, they all in the room together. You know, it's Sarah, the girl, Puff, and, and this dude, this rapper. So uh, I'm here at the door and stuff like that. Like, yeah, so then next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We had the presidential suite where we was at. So I opened the door and uh, the dude said, yo, I'm here for my cousin. I said, who your cousin? And he said, uh, Ja Rule. I said, well, he busy right now. He said, uh, he busy doing what? I said, he with Puff, they're in the room, they busy, they don't wanna be bothered. The entire entertainment industry has been buzzing about Sean Diddy Combs and his secret s**tapades. It's like every celeb out there, from Usher to 50 Cent, has been dropping hints that something was up with Diddy. Old interviews are resurfacing left and right and everyone's got something to say about it. Even Mike Tyson, the boxing legend himself, has thrown his hat into the ring. Now Tyson isn't exactly a stranger to controversy, with his own history of SA allegations and a complicated past with Diddy. But now he's coming out with a warning for the Bad Boy Records founder. The question is, should Diddy be taking notes? Or is this just another case of people stirring the pot? But before we get into all that juicy gossip, let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Diddy's facing some serious heat right now, with lawsuits and allegations piling up like nobody's business. It's a whole mess of legal trouble and it's got everyone talking. So grab your popcorn and get ready to dive deep into this wild ride. We'll be breaking down the details of the lawsuits, the shocking revelations from celebrity interviews, and of course Mike Tyson's two cents on the whole situation. It's time to get to the bottom of this Diddy drama once and for all. All right, let's talk about Sean Diddy Combs, the big shot music mogul and the mastermind behind Bad Boy Records. This guy's been knee deep in legal trouble and accusations for decades, and it's only getting worse. Recently, a whole bunch of lawsuits has dropped some serious bombshells about the artist formerly known as Puff Daddy. We're talking about some messed up stuff that goes all the way back to the early 90s. In a November 2023 lawsuit, an unnamed victim accused Combs and R&B singer Aaron Hall of assaulting her and a friend after a music industry event, followed by a brutal beating when confronted days later. Another lawsuit from the same month alleges that Combs drugged, assaulted, and videotaped 19-year-old Joey Dickerson after a date in 91. But Combs has been in and out of courtrooms for years. In 96, he was found guilty of criminal mischief for pulling a gun on a New York Post photographer. In 99, he was facing felony charges for allegedly beating down record exec Steve Stout. In 2001, TV host Roger Mills tried to sue Puff for assault, false imprisonment, and a bunch of other stuff, but the jury ended up siding with Combs. The allegations took an even darker turn in the early 2000s. A December 2023 lawsuit claims that in 2003, Combs, his former Bad Boy Records president Harve Pierre, and a third unidentified man allegedly teamed up a 17-year-old victim at a Manhattan recording studio. The accusations keep piling up. In 2007, Gerard Recknitzer sued Combs, saying he punched him and harassed his girlfriend outside a Hollywood club. That same year, Combs making the band co-star Lorianne Gibson filed a police complaint accusing him of threatening her with a chair. And in 2017, Combs' former personal chef, Cindy Ruella, sued him for harassment and retaliation but they settled out of court in 2019. The latest wave of lawsuits emerged in 2022 to 2023, with producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones alleging <laughs> forced solicitation of workers <laughs> and coercion to take illegal drugs while working on Diddy's album. In November 2023, multiple accusers filed civil suits against Combs under New York's Adult Survivors Act. Singer Cassie Ventura accused him of years of <laughs> misconduct, harassment, trafficking and more, but they settled out of court just a day after she filed. Two more lawsuits followed. As if that wasn't enough, 
federal agents raided homes associated with Combs in Los Angeles and Miami in March 2024 as part of an ongoing investigation. The disturbing pattern of allegations spanning decades has cast a dark shadow over Combs' career and raises some big questions about how the music industry turns a blind eye to misconduct. Mike Tyson's allegations. And to keep it 100, Diddy's not the only big shot dodging punches these days. Mike Tyson himself has been on the ropes lately with his own set of jacked up allegations. Tyson, the guy who used to dominate the boxing ring, has a seriously sketchy past when it comes to his treatment of women. We're talking about some heavy hitting allegations that'll make you want to throw in the towel. It all started back in 88 when Tyson married actress Robin Givens. Their marriage was a straight up dumpster fire, with Givens coming out and saying Tyson had laid hands on her, threatened to take her out, and even went after her family. Who the hell does that? No wonder they called it quits shortly after. But that was just the beginning. Fast forward to 1991, and Tyson's at this Miss Black America pageant rehearsal, where he meets Desiree Washington. He takes her back to his hotel room, and despite her telling him to stop, he assaults her. Tyson tried to claim it was all consensual, but a grand jury wasn't buying it. They indicted him, and he ended up serving three years in the slammer. You'd think that would have taught him a lesson, but fast forward to 2023, and another unnamed victim comes forward with a lawsuit saying Tyson forced himself on her in his limo back in the early 90s. It's a whole laundry list of accusations and convictions that paint a picture of a dude who's got a serious problem with a women. It just goes to show that no matter how much cash or clout you've got, no one should get a free pass to treat others like garbage. Diddy and Mike go way back and let's just say their history is filled with some serious drama and even a few bodies. In 91, Diddy put together this celebrity basketball game at City College. It was like a who's who of the 90s hip hop scene. You had Big Daddy Kane, Heavy D, some of the Run DMC crew, LL Cool J, and of course Mike Tyson. But things took a dark turn when nine people got crushed to death after a mob rushed to get into the packed event. No one ever got hit with criminal charges, but a New York judge in a civil case ended up pointing the finger at Combs. They said he didn't handle the event right, and didn't have enough security. The college got blamed too. Fast forward a few years, and the East Coast West Coast beef in hip hop was turning into an all out war, both in the streets and on the mic. In one corner, you had Puff's boy Notorious B.I.G., and in the other, you had Tyson's guy Tupac. Tyson and Pac were so close that on September 7, 1996, the night Pac got gunned down in a drive by, he was in Vegas specifically to see Tyson fight. Tyson truly cared about Pac. Tupac was one of the few people who visited Tyson when he was locked up. Years later, in an interview with DJ Vlad, Tyson even said he felt guilty about the whole thing. He was like, I feel a little guilty about him coming to the fight and me pressuring him. I was supposed to go out with him that night. I promised to go to the club with him that night, but I just had a little baby, and her mother was provoking me to stay home. So I stayed home. Just months after that, Biggie ended up losing his life too, and a lot of people said it was payback for Pac's death. This hit his best friend and producer Sean Combs hard. You'd think these two tragedies would have Tyson and Combs at each other's throats for life. Especially because Dwayne Keith D. Davis, some West Coast gangster, and a suspect in Tupac's murder, claimed that Diddy put up $1 million to have Tupac killed. But no one ever proved that for sure. So despite all the drama and tragedy, it looks like Diddy and Tyson never let the beef get between them. In 97, Mike even showed up to the grand opening of Puff's spot, Justin's. They even posed for a pic together. Then, in this old clip from a 98 episode of the Keenan Ivory Wayans show that's been making the rounds lately, Mike and Diddy seem to be all good. In fact, during the interview, Tyson grabbed Diddy's hand and held it up to show off his bling, saying, it truly is about the Benjamins which was a nod to his classic 97 track with Biggie, Lil' Kim, and the LOX. But 50 Cent, being the mess stirrer he is, posted the clip on his IG and claimed that Tyson was actually annoyed with where Diddy's hand was and was trying to move it away from him, not admiring Diddy's jewelry. Diddy and Mike have been tight and partying together since before that interview aired and even after. And considering how long Mike has known him and all the wild nights they've probably had together, it seems like he might have some inside scoop on all the rumors flying around. This is where the story gets wild. Music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones sued Diddy for a cool $30 million, 
claiming the rap mogul put him through some seriously traumatic stuff. We're talking <laughs> trafficking, <laughs> use, forced drug use, fraud, and SA, the whole nine yards. Jones says he's been dealing with some heavy psychological baggage ever since he worked with Diddy on his album, The Love Album, Off The Grid. Oh, and apparently Diddy didn't even pay him for his work. Talk about adding insult to injury. Now Jones didn't just file a lawsuit, he came prepared with a whole damn PowerPoint presentation. In his 73-page complaint, he included photos, screenshots, and video stills to back up his claims against Diddy. Some of these pics are straight-up graphic, showing facts and even the aftermath of an alleged shooting. Two photos allegedly show the aftermath of a shooting in a music studio bathroom, where someone named G got shot. There's blood, clothes, and paper towels all over the place. Jones claims Diddy and his crew made him lie about what went down that night on September 12, 2022. They were at a music camp at Chalice Recording Studio when Diddy's son Justin and G got into a heated argument that spilled into the bathroom. Jones says he heard gunshots, and when people gathered around the restroom, he saw G bleeding. He was scared he might be next on the hit list. He claims he was the only one who helped G and got him to the ambulance, while Diddy was allegedly telling everyone to say the shooting happened outside the studio. But wait, there's more. The next batch of photos covers a whole range of SA incidents that Jones says happened to him. In one set of screenshots, two men appear to be getting it on, and Jones claims Diddy forced him to watch, telling him one of the men was some hotshot musician that Jones looked up to. The lawsuit alleges Diddy used Jones's admiration for the musician to ice him into engaging in homosexuality. Diddy allegedly told Jones that being gay is just par for the course in the music biz. Then there are stills from a video at a Thanksgiving party in 2022, showing Jones, Diddy, rapper Young Miami, and her cousin. Jones says he thinks Diddy told Young Miami's cousin to follow him into the bathroom and offer him services. When he turned her down, she allegedly followed him back to the party and tried to get freaky with him in front of everyone. Jones also claims Diddy forced him to do cocaine at the party. Another set of video stills shows Diddy chatting with Oscar-winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. on Diddy's yacht. Jones says he believed Diddy was gr pass off to his famous friends, including Gooding Jr. Some stills allegedly show Gooding Jr. getting handsy with Jones, touching his legs, inner thighs, back and shoulders against his will. In the lawsuit, Jones accuses Diddy of trafficking and making him find workers for him in Miami. The photos show some of the alleged workers with their faces blacked out. Jones claims Diddy sent him to a strip club called Booby Trap on the River to find workers, even though he didn't want to. Another explosive allegation is that Diddy drugged Jones, and he woke up in bed with two workers, and Diddy. There are photos that supposedly show the workers, and Diddy sleeping in a bed. The lawsuit even compares Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Corum, to Ghislaine Maxwell, the infamous trafficker who worked with Jeffrey Epstein. It claims Corum made sure Diddy's drug of choice was always on hand, and that she ordered workers and prostitutes for him. This whole thing is a mess, and if even half of these allegations are true, Diddy could be in some serious trouble. But that's not all, because in early April, Diddy's son Christian Combs got hit with an SA lawsuit that named both him and his dad. Well, NBC News is getting an exclusive look at a new lawsuit involving music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. In the lawsuit, a woman is accusing Diddy's son, Christian Combs, of assault while she was working on a yacht chartered by his father in 2022. Sean Combs is accused of aiding and abetting. Reps for both men have not yet responded to comment uh, on this latest incident, but it is the latest allegation against Diddy, who's facing accusations of assault and trafficking. He has denied all of the recent claims against him. The 31-page lawsuit was filed in Los Angeles Superior Court, according to the plaintiff's attorney, Grace Omarque. Omarque was working as a crew member and bartender on a yacht that Combs and his family had rented back in December 2022. Then, in the early hours of December 28th, Christian allegedly pressured Omarque to take a shot of tequila, and shortly after that, he assaulted her. Omar K thinks the tequila, which Christian supposedly brought on board, might have been laced with some kind of drugs. Now, Diddy himself isn't being accused of SA in this lawsuit, but he's still named in it for allegedly being liable and aiding and abetting his son's behavior. 
The lawsuit mentions an audio recording from a makeshift recording studio on the yacht, which is where Omar K says the alleged assault started. According to a partial transcript in the lawsuit, Omar K was being pressured to take a shot and asked Christian, are you drugging me? And Combs replied, take the shot. CNN listened to the audio recordings and confirmed that the transcript in the lawsuit is legit. On the yacht, Christian allegedly cornered Omar K in a room and became physical and extremely aggressive. The lawsuit says Combs grabbed Omar K by the arm and tried to force himself on her, and he only stopped when another yacht employee walked into the room. There are even photos in the court filing that seem to show bruises on the plaintiff's forearm. The lawsuit is going after unspecified damages, but let's be real. This is just another huge blow to Diddy and his family's reputation. It's like every time you turn around, there's another accusation or lawsuit popping up. It's a mess, and it doesn't look like it's going to get better anytime soon. Mike Tyson's Perspective It's interesting to see how much Tyson has grown and changed his perspective on things, especially when it comes to orientation. In the past, he was known for his violent lifestyle and profession, but since retiring, he seems to have become a lot more open-minded. During his conversation with Lil Nas X on his Hotboxing podcast, Tyson was asked if he was ever anti-gay back in the 90s. His response was pretty revealing. He admitted that he used to say some ignorant shit, but he also mentioned that he has friends and even family members who are gay. He talked about how they love each other, fight for each other, and would die for each other. It's clear from Tyson's own words that he's come a long way in terms of his understanding and acceptance of different sexual orientations. This personal growth might be one of the reasons he's sticking by Diddy's side during this whole legal mess. In another interview, Tyson spoke about his long history with Diddy and even mentioned partying with him in the past. He described Diddy as an awesome guy and said, No, I'm um, just a new for a long time. Got it. And with you, he was chill. He was good. He was awesome guy. Yeah. Um, I knew him before he was um, Diddy. And I knew him for a long time. When I, when I first became champ, I knew him. I remember him. He used to have crates when he used to have my after parties and stuff. Also when they were throwing parties. It sounds like Tyson and Diddy do go way back. And Tyson has seen firsthand what kind of person Diddy is, at least in the context of their relationship. His support for Diddy during this time could be a testament to the strength of their friendship and the respect they have for each other. Of course, it's important to remember that Tyson's personal opinion of Diddy doesn't necessarily have any bearing on the validity of the accusations against him. But it does provide some insight into their relationship. Tyson went on to admit that both he and Diddy came up from a life of crime before hitting it big. In Tyson's own words, you know, those guys, they weren't, they weren't on yet. I was, the, I was like the first street guy that really got on. You know, I'm talking about the guy doing crime in the streets that became a television guy and everyone knew he was a celebrity, had fancy oh, wow. cars. I was the first. This is all in Brooklyn. I'm the first of our of our generation of that kind of that crew, you know, the, mm. the street hustlers that really blew up like that. Tyson is basically saying that he was the first guy from their generation to go from being a street hustler to a celebrity with fancy cars and all that. He and Diddy both came from the same kind of background doing whatever they had to do to make it out of the hood and get rich and famous. But here's the thing. You'd think that once they made it, they'd leave that crime life behind them, right? But from what we're seeing with all these allegations and lawsuits, it seems like maybe Diddy never fully left that lifestyle behind. And we know Tyson had his own issues with the law even after he blew up. It's like they brought some of that street mentality with them into their new lives. And it's coming back to bite them now, especially Diddy. All the money in the world can't erase your past or make you immune to the consequences of your actions. It's a cautionary tale. Just because you make it out and get successful doesn't mean you can keep living like you're above the law. Sooner or later it catches up with you. And it looks like Diddy might be learning that lesson the hard way right now. It's clear that the world of celebrity is far from perfect. And even the most successful and influential figures can have dark secrets lurking beneath the surface. But here's the thing. No matter how much money, fame, or power you have, you can't escape the consequences of your actions forever. The truth has a way of coming out, and when it does, it can be devastating. For Diddy, the mounting lawsuits and accusations paint a disturbing picture of a man who allegedly used his position to manipulate, exploit, and use others. If even a fraction of these claims are true, it's a damning indictment not just of Diddy himself, 
but of the industry that enabled and protected him for so long. And while Mike Tyson's support might provide some comfort to Diddy on a personal level, it doesn't change the facts of the case. As we continue to watch this saga unfold, let's remember that the voices of the survivors matter most of all. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content like this.